Hi, my name is Mani Alikani. I am Dean and Professor at CITOR Academy and I'd like to welcome you to another session of CITOR channel. The topic of today's discussion is the step-by-step -step procedures for application of the MOPs or macro perforations for our patient. If you remember from the previous sessions, we discussed that MOPs can increase the rate of bone remodeling and therefore can be utilized for many applications in the clinic. Today's discussion is not about indication of using MOPs, but how to apply MOPs. We will talk about the indications in the next session. If you plan to apply MOPs, you need minimum equipment or instruments. The first things that you need is a topical anesthetic, local anesthetic, an instrument to apply mops. Instrument to apply mops are either manual or with the rotatory machinery with a low speed. The purpose is to cause perforation inside the bone without causing significant ulceration in the tissue. The procedure is very simple. You apply a topical, you apply a local, and then you apply your mops. After application of the mops, you don't expect bleeding or discomfort for your patient. The main questions, however, is where we should apply the MOPs. The first part is recognizing your target unit. The target unit is the tooth or section of the dental arch that you plan to move. MOPs should be close to your target unit. It should not be close to the anchor unit. In another word, MOPs should be utilized based on your treatment plan and that specific stage of treatment where you want to move a specific section of the dental arch. That makes the MOPs very unique. It's not that you are turning the bone remodeling all around your arch. Each time you only apply the MOPs in the place that you need it. One of the main questions when you are applying the MOPs that you need to answer is should I apply it mesial or distal to the target unit, buccal or lingual to the target unit? Let's look at each one of them separately. As a general rule, always apply the MOPs in the direction of the movement. For example, if you're moving a tooth mesially, you apply the MOPs in the mesial side. From the buccolingual side, it is recommended that always penetrate from both sides. This is much easier in the upper arch because the soft tissue in both palatal and buccal side allows application of MOP easily. However, in the lower arch, most of the time people prefer only to apply from buccal side because the lingual soft tissue sometimes can cause ulceration and discomfort for the patient. But if you can apply it, it's recommended to apply from the lingual side too. The next question is the point of entrance of the MOPs. Where it should be? What should be the height that we are applying the MOPs? Most of the time to prevent ulceration, usually it's recommended that MOPs be applied in attached gingiva. The mobile tissue, when you're applying the MOP, can rotate around the instrument and cause significant ulceration. Therefore, the point of entrance usually is recommended to be through the attached gingiva. Remember, we are not applying any flap. We are penetrating through the soft tissue. So that point of soft tissue, if it is in attached gingiva, usually does not cause any ulceration, bleeding, or discomfort. The question is after that is if you are applying a mop, what would be the depth of penetration? That depends on what you are trying to target. If you are trying to target the more coronal part of the alveolar bone, you probably are going more perpendicular to the alveolar bone. Therefore, your depth of the penetration is not more than three to five millimeters. On the other hand, if you're planning to target more apical part of the alveolar bone, considering your point of entrance is in attached gingiva, you need to change your angulation to more a vertical position, maybe 45 degrees or more, and therefore to access that apical bone, you need to increase the depth of your perforation, perhaps to the five to seven millimeters. If you remember from the previous session, we mentioned that increasing the number of the perforation increases the rate of bone remodeling. However, not always the tissue around the area, the target unit that we have, allow us to have multiple point of entrance. The number of perforation cannot be increased how we can compensate for this anatomical problem. Easiest way is increasing the length or the depth of the penetration. 
In another word, if you cannot increase the number of penetration, increase the depth of the penetration, so you will be able to stimulate bone remodeling in a, a wider area of the bone. The final question is that any discomfort or uh, side effects that I need to be worried after we applying the mops. Usually no specific procedures required after mops. The patients just need to keep the mouth clean. There is minimum amount of the bleeding and almost all the studies unanimously announce that the patient does not face any discomfort. However, be ready to provide uh, some minimum pain uh, medication in case patient has uh, discomfort and don't forget to follow your patient. I hope you enjoyed this session of Citor channel. If you have not subscribed to our channel so far, please go ahead and subscribe and please don't forget to press the like button. Thank you.